Hey everybody, Terry with the Drone Cap. Hope you're having a wonderful Thursday and uh, or whatever day you happen to be watching it. And I hope you've had a wonderful week. And and you know we're trudging right into the holiday season here and everything. I just 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 hope you're doing well. You know, with all the craziness and the you know the safety issues and all that stuff. I just hope you're doing well. And I'm glad you're back for another episode. All right. We're just going to continue down the road that we've been going as far as talking about small camera systems, small handheld cameras, and all kinds of cool stuff, stuff like that. But uh, first of all, you probably noticed the background, the scenery is a little different. Yeah, we're having kind of an ugly day here in Florida um, with the uh, tropical storm moving up through the Gulf. And I hope everybody is safe in the path of that thing. We're getting a lot of rain, a lot of wind. Overall, it's just not the beautiful, uh, typical florida uh, sunny skies that you see in the other episodes but hey it's a beautiful day because we're here and so we've got cool stuff to talk about and uh, just I mean, it's just it's always fun it's always productive it's always exciting to talk about this stuff with you and i appreciate talking to everybody again let's keep it going let's keep the interaction going i might have something cool coming up for you too mm -hmm. so uh so just stick around for that I haven't quite put all the pieces to that puzzle together yet before i tell you about it anyway first Breaking news. Uh, uh, I don't know. Whatever. Maybe some music. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about uh, drones for a minute. I mean, this is the drone cab, and we've been talking about ground-based handheld stuff here lately. But got a little update on the drone front. You know I love the Mini. You know I love the Mini. The Mini has been a little marvel. This thing shoots fantastic video. I mean, I've done stuff that has been in some films. Um, you saw uh, some uh, blah, blah, blah stuff I posted a few weeks ago, a clip I shot for an upcoming film, chasing a boat down a river and the Black Hawk helicopter and all that. You know, shot it with this guy, this exact many, not one just like it. It was this many that was in the air. So it did a really nice job for that. But keep in mind, this is a first generation product. I've had it about a year. Uh, fantastic. It's been 100% reliable. It hasn't given me any grief, heartache, hiccups, nothing. It's been a really, really, really solid product uh, to put in the sky and to rely on. Um, as always with a first generation product, there is room to grow. DJI just this week addressed that. They released the Mini 2. Notice I didn't say the Mavic Mini 2. It's the Mini 2. They dropped the word Mavic out of there. So for whatever it means. I mean, it's still a Mavic. It still looks like a Mavic. In fact, the two looks precisely exactly the same as this. There are a couple little differences uh, to the look, but it's not anything that's going to jump out at you. The big differences are things that, that we've wanted, that we've asked DJI for, and they have responded. Again, DJI, I'm not just patting these guys on the back. I love Autel. I love other companies that make really good products as well. But DJI and they're working 24-7. I mean, they're really churning out some great new technology and making it affordable enough to put it in everybody's hands. So what did they do with the Mini 2? Basically, three big things that jump out to me that are important to me. First of all, the camera. I mean, after all, isn't that why we fly? It's, it's a camera platform. So remember, this guy shoots in 2.7K, up to 30 frames per second. Not bad. I mean, again, it's good enough if you use the right technique, you use the right post uh, uh, software, you use the right post uh, tools and things like that. You can really get some good image quality out of it, as I've done. Um, it's, it's very cool for that. But a lot of people want the 4K. And 4K does give you a bit more leeway, a bit more quality, and, and it's just less well, 4K. So, yes, the Mini 2 has 4K. Now, this is the Mini 1. Remember, I'm not getting ahead of myself. I don't have a Mini 2 yet, but you know it'll happen. So we'll talk about it when I get it, and we'll do some hands-on review with it. But anyway, the new Mini uh, 2 shoots in 4K up to 30 frames per second. Not too bad. Same 12-megapixel camera, but it does support the uh, 4K uh, now. All right, as far as still photos, any improvement there? Actually, there is. It now shoots in RAW which this does not. So you have that capability for your still photos now. So that's kind of cool. So that's like number one on my list, um, the camera. Number two, OcuSync 2.0. Well, what's OcuSync? Well, we've talked about it before. And OcuSync is the link between your aircraft and your controller. 
It keeps them talking to each other. Many one uses a version of Wi-Fi. Now again, all these connections are basically different versions of Wi-Fi. So um, the version this had was very good, very reliable, um, but it could be subject to some interference. If you're flying, say, in a city where you have a lot of Wi-Fi network traffic, or if you're flying near things that, that generate a lot of, of uh, interference, like uh, maybe power lines, or just, again, a congested area like that where the airwaves are really, really you know, heavy traffic. Well, OcuSync has been around for a while in its original version, OcuSync 1, which is a basically a tougher version of Wi-Fi. And it allows for further distance. It allows for a stronger transmission signal between the two devices. Well, OcuSync 2 came about not too long ago. That's what's in the Mavic Air 2. It allows for, again, further distance, more stable signal, more stable video quality to back to your controller and your control screen, whether it's your phone or tablet or whatever you're using. Now the Mini 2 has OcuSync 2.0. Now I believe the specs call for that allowing 10 kilometers of distance. Now again, that's going to be way beyond your visual line of sight. So that's not legal to fly. So we're not going to fly that. And again, you don't want to put a little guy like this so far out that you don't have you know, a lot of control of it either because you've got to think about how much battery you're going to need to fly back home, things like that. So again, it's one of those situations where just because it can doesn't mean you should. So what that does mean is whatever distance you're flying, whether it's close, whether it's in a congested city area or whatever, you're going to have a much more robust connection to the aircraft. So cool thing there, really cool thing there. Love the OcuSync and um, that is going to be a big plus a big boom. Now, that's number two. Number three is the controller. Now you just saw the controller here for the Mini. This is kind of the Mini or Mavic um, controller that's been around for a long time. I mean, the handles you can see kind of pop out. You slip your phone or your tablet up in here. It connects with a cable. You, you know, fiddle with the antennas and pop them up and then you're good to go. Well, that's all right. I mean, it's a little small. It's a little, you know, fiddly to handle. But it, it, the thing that I've never really liked about it, that, well, I can't say that. I hate it. It's just one of those things. If I could change, I would have. But DJI doesn't let me do any engineering, so couldn't do much about it. Is the fact that your control screen sits here. So that means if your drone is up here in the sky and you're looking down at your control screen, you, your eyes have to travel that much further down to see your screen and to make any interaction. So you're constantly doing this. You know, you're, you're hunting around for it. And again, it's nice and compact. It was small, it, it got the job done, but it's, um, you know, it could have been better, right? So Mavic Air 2 comes along and they do it better. Now let's look at these dudes side by side. All right, see the difference? Now, the first thing people say is, Oh, but it's so much bigger. It's so much bulkier. It's going to be so heavy to carry around my back. Come on. It's not that big. It's not that heavy. And it fits your hands so much better. So much better. You don't have your control screen down on the bottom here. Rather, it lives up top now. So now your eyes aren't traveling all over the place, all the way down here. To look at your control screen, they're only coming down this far. Pretty cool, right? All right, how about those antennas? They're right here. They're in, in your device holder, whether you have your phone or your tablet, whatever, locked in here. So, again, you're not looking all over the place. All right, well, where's he going with this? Why are we talking about Mavic Air 2 controllers? Because this is what you get with the Mini 2 now. Yeah, the controller's bigger than the aircraft. I mean, again... It's exactly the same size as this, the Mini 2. Same, same as Mini 1, so it's, you know, same body basically. But you can see the controller is even bigger. But who cares? It's a much better experience. It's much easier to control. The button layout is fantastic. Here, you've got your shutter button. You've got your scroll wheel. Just, again, fantastic, fantastic. So that, to me, is the third big thing. Now, of course, the price went up a little bit, 
but it still gives you huge bang for the buck. The basic mini went up to 449, it went up 50 bucks. That's with the aircraft, controller, and one battery. But I'm always gonna say this, unless they do something really wildly crazy and change my mind, get the fly more combo. In this case, it bumps it up to 599 over the previous 499. So, wow, it's getting windy. I apologize if you hear wind noise, but hey, mother nature, right? Um, so, it bumps this up to 599, but again, you get a bunch of batteries, you get a really nice charger case, and boy, it's getting breezy here. Definitely not, not drone flying weather, that's for sure. So anyway, you get a bunch of nice stuff for that. So it's gotten even better. It uh, Again, it still doesn't have sensors, so it doesn't have ob obstacle avoidance. It can't do active track. Now, we may see a third party come out with that at some point, but right now it doesn't have it. But as far as a good, I mean, uh, better than good, a fantastic quality 4K drone that's going to be very stable, be able to handle level 5 winds, because that, that went up with uh, stronger motors, too. Um, it's going to be a pretty nice powerhouse. So for 600 bucks, you got a pretty nice kit. So if you're thinking about uh, one or the other, the Mavic uh, Mini or the Mavic Air 2, or you know, if you're thinking Mavic Pro, you're looking at you know, mid-1,000 to $2,000 anyway. So you're not looking in this, this category. But if you're thinking about something budget-friendly, here you go. So anyway, breaking news. Sorry that went on a bit long. But, um, you know, just a, a lot to talk about. It, it's a really cool tool that can give you a lot for the money. So, let's jump over here and just talk a minute about the um, the uh, Osmo 4, the OM4. And OM, again, is for Osmo Mobile 4. Um, I just love this thing. I've been uh, working with it. I've been just doing some sample stuff, checking out all the modes, shooting here and there. And it is, again, it's just a fantastic product. It doesn't break the bank. And like I said uh, in the last episode, you've got a smartphone in your pocket. I'll bet you you've got a smartphone. And I'm sure it's got a pretty darn good camera because it's been a while since they put really nasty cameras in them. And with the new phones just coming out, especially that new iPhone 12, crazy good cameras. So why reinvent the wheel? Why go spend money on another camera? But a gimbal is going to give you some good control. Now, if you're using a DSLR or a bigger camera system, they do make the Ronin. You might be familiar with the Ronins. It's basically like like the, the big you know, uh, Osmo Mobile on steroids. I mean, it's to handle bigger devices like that. But again, we're going up in cost. So what we're talking about is doing this on a budget. Doing your film, taking away those budgetary excuses to get you out there right now, right today, I mean, zip down to Best Buy or wherever and pick one of these up for 150 bucks and start shooting your movie with a stabilized gimbal that also has some tools built into it. So today, I'm going to show you a couple examples here in just a minute of some things I just went out and shot this morning in between rain. So it's, again, it's not going to be super fancy, but it's going to be some examples of a couple things. And we're going to look at a few of these in each episode going forward. We're going to talk about spin shots. We're going to talk about the uh, dynamic zoom or dyna zoom, but it's basically dolly zoom, you know, kind of the Alfred Hitchcock thing. And um, yeah, I've got one other one in there I want to throw in, just just the tail end, just kind of a fun one. So uh, one thing I want to say, though, about the dynamic zoom and about these gimbals in general, before we uh, take off and look at my uh, examples here, there is stability on three axes, right, for that. There's one axis that a gimbal, doesn't matter what what kind of handheld gimbal like this it is, Zions or all these different brands, they're all subject to what's called Z-axis. And that is the actual motion as you're walking. All right, you may have heard of the ninja walk. Heel to toe, you kind of roll your feet and you keep it as stable as possible. That is something you're gonna to wanna to practice if you're using a handheld gimbal like this, particularly with something like DynaZoom. Because the way this works is, you lock on, you focus, draw a little box on the screen around your center subject. The system locks onto that and you either move out or move in toward it as the focus changes and the background perspective and, and parallax and all that shifts. But the problem is with the Z axis, if you're not super duper smooth, you tend to get a little bit of this. 
and so your your final product looks a little wobbly or a little wavy. Now you can probably correct a good bit of that in post, but you know, try to avoid it in the first place. A couple tricks for that, again, the Ninja Walk being one. Or if you would happen to have a track that you can mount your tripod on, is another cool thing. But another cool uh, way to get around that, and let's block my face here, if you have a tripod already, or a monopod, that will help in some cool ways. Now, well, you say, oh, I've got a tripod, but I have to buy a monopod. You don't have to buy a monopod, because your tripod has three legs, right? So why don't you just do this? I mean, you might already know this. This might be old news, but hey, might not. Now this isn't the fanciest tripod in the world, but hey, it does a job. Does the job. So now, just leave that one extended, and you have a couple handles here. I don't know how well you can see that, but you've got a couple handles. Now you've effectively got a monopod. So what you can do is lock the focus onto your subject. Uh, again, this is for the dynamic zoom. Lock it on. Brace if you need to, where that foot is, and just bring it back. It's going to keep the focus locked on your subject. And it's going to give you a nice smooth motion. And you want to avoid too much arc. You want to keep it as smooth as possible so you're not really going to want to start super low and come back super low. But hey, that's just another option, another way of doing it, another way of being creative and using the tools that you've got without having to go out, shell out more money just to buy something to get one type shot. But again, you can work on that Z axis. That's going to apply to all your, your moving motion um, the, again, I, I keep saying the Ninja Walk, it's such a silly name, but it does does make a difference. The smoother and more stable and the less of this up and down motion with your uh, gimbal is going to really make the shot all the more stable. Because I used that word just a minute ago, parallax, I've used it before. It's a cool word, but it's a cool effect. Parallax. Parallax is the coolest thing, right? So anyway, it's, again, it's that shift in the background versus the foreground and that z-axis is going to make a difference. So just be mindful of that. So anyway, as always, if you want to talk about anything, you want to talk about these handheld systems, you want to talk about the new Mavic uh, Mini 2 or the Mini 2, it's going to take me forever to get that, that Mavic word out of my head. You know, it's like trying to figure out how to write the current year on things after January 1st. Anyway, That'll eventually get out of my system. But anyway, you want to talk about that? You want to talk about the Mavic Air 2? Any of the drones? Uh, just the camera settings? What uh, the particulars about flight are? Any of that stuff? Give me a shout. You've got my email address, terry at blackdogdroneops.com. And you know I'm a mentor here at the Indy Brigade, so book a session. Let's dig into your production. Let's, or if you're thinking about buying something. You know, that's what I'm here for, is to answer your questions and, and get you just out there right now today that's the goal get out there and start shooting right away without breaking the bank because it's possible we've got amazing technology right now so we can do it so anyway let's take a look at a few of these clips and, and stills i shot just messing around uh, this morning in between rainstorms and windstorms and all the current chaos so um i hope you have a great week great weekend I hope you have, uh, I mean, we're easing in to holiday weeks uh, here coming up. So I hope everything is going great for everybody. Anything you need, let me know. Thanks for watching.